What's up everybody, this is Danny and I'm here at CES 2026 and behind me is all the smart home stuff that's coming out for this year. So let's go take a look and find the best of smart home at CES 2026. Let's go. The first place I stopped by was a channel sponsor, Akara's booth. A lot of companies were showing off robots to be flashy and demoing solutions that will probably never come to market. But Akara was all business with products that are ready for your home now. The first thing I saw was the new Thermostat Hub W200. This has a 4-inch touchscreen and acts as a matter hub and a millimeter wave presence sensor. This also has support for Apple's new adaptive temperature feature with clean energy guidance. And it works together with the new G400 doorbell while it will show you who's at the front door, which is nice. And you can lock and unlock your car locks directly directly from here which is awesome with no subscriptions or any of that mess. The star of the show was the brand new Acara U400 lock. This lock uses ultra wideband technology so as soon as you approach the door it will unlock it for you so this is hands free the fastest and most convenient way. This also supports Apple home key so you can unlock directly through your iPhone or Apple watch. But on top of that this already supports the Alira protocol so they demoed how this will work with Samsung Galaxy phones as well which I think is incredible. Of course you can enter a pin code if you want there's a fingerprint sensor there too. With matter over threat support and IP65 waterproofing, I think this is one of the best locks that you can buy in 2026. I am so excited to install this. I have this waiting for me at home. The Camera Hub G350 gets a major boost with 4K resolution and 9x hybrid zoom. It pan and tilts for 360 degree coverage and it's a Zigbee and Matter Hub for other devices. So I love how you can do different hand gestures like an L or a P sign to trigger certain automations, which I think is really neat. The last thing I looked at was the multi-state sensor P100. You can use it for doors without needing a separate magnet so that alone makes it so versatile. They demoed where you can put this on a picture or something valuable and it will sound the alarm that is on the home station M410. This is small enough to put inside of a mailbox like this since it detects vibration as well so you can get notifications when your mailbox has been opened or closed. After walking around experiencing all of this, this booth really impressed me. I am convinced that Akara is the smart home company that everyone needs to know about from simple and easy automations that you can build in the app to complex ones using Akara Builder. They really have an ecosystem worth checking out. So I will leave a link down below so you can check out all of the details about all of these new products released at CES 2026. I am for sure getting some of these at home so make sure that you subscribe to see more car products here on the channel. For the rest of the tour, let's start with some of the bigger companies and then we'll go to the startups. Roborock achieved the impossible, it seemed like. I always said if there was a robot vacuum company that could conquer the cleaning of the stairs, they could make a billion dollars. And we saw a lot of companies showing off how they would tackle the stairs. Dreamy had a separate attachment that the vacuum could dock into and that would climb the stairs. So you could just use one vacuum for the entire house. And I do have to say, this is one of the fastest solutions that I saw on the CES floor. And Mova showed off a drone that would take your vacuum upstairs. but I'm not sure how practical that is yet. And they also had a concept of a stair climbing solution. And while this looked awesome, it was actually super slow. So I expected to be disappointed with Roborock's rendition, but you know what? They did it. This not only climbs the stairs with very unique arms on each side, but guess what? It can actually vacuum the stairs too, which I just could not believe. And what's even better is that the Roborock Sauros Rover is not a prototype. This will be available later this year, so it's not vaporware. Roborock stated that they're taking their time with the software on this one, so I'm super excited to test this. What do you think? Is this a game changer? Instead of going for the flashy stair climbing vacuum, Narwhal doubled down on making their new Flow 2 one of the best flagship robot vacuums. There is a new design language on the Flow 2, which is a departure from their more rounded designs. They increased the suction power all the way up to 30,000 pascals, so that is fantastic. One of the cool new features on the navigation system is that if you have a lost item, let's say a piece of jewelry or a phone, the vacuum can identify it, let's say if it sees it under furniture, and notifies you in the app. And if it recognizes a baby crib, then it can lower the suction noise. So this is more practical use of AI, which I think is nice for a robot vacuum. When I walked by this booth, it intrigued me because check this out. You can use your robot vacuum as the base for a stick vacuum and I've never seen this before and I thought it was clever. Look at how easy it was just with the stick portion into the robot vacuum itself and it looked more nimble than I thought it would be for this form factor. So what do you think? Is this genius or would you just rather keep them separated? Dreamy absolutely decided to go for every company out there and I've never seen anything like this at CES. I feel like they went after Samsung and LG by announcing refrigerators that dispense custom carbonated water, stoves, kitchen appliances, air fryers, washer and dryer 
chairs with robots that swap out the laundry, high resolution TVs. I mean, I thought this was a vacuum company. They even announced the car concept, which again, just blew my mind, but they did show off their new flagship wet dry vacuum and it worked incredible. I was able to put down oatmeal and ketchup all over the floor and it was able to clean all of it up in a single pass. So I can't wait to get this one at home. They had a robot vacuum that had a steam mop built in, which I've never seen before. And the new X60 Ultra is very thin and it also has a new navigation system that responds to objects even being thrown at it in real time. And it also has a whopping 35,000 pascals of suction power. So Dreamy is the company you look out for in 2026. They even made AK action cameras coming after DJI and Insta360. Seriously, they went absolutely bonkers at the show. Samsung finally announced a new robot vacuum and it's powered by the new Snapdragon processor, which is unique. This is finally a modern release and I'm looking forward to it. And the suction power is so strong that it was able to lift a 10 kilogram dumbbell. So let's see how this compares to the competition later this year. They also added Gemini to the family hub fridge. So this will help overall with regular day-to-day -day questions, but where Gemini really helps is in the food recognition. It raises the fresh food count from about 37 recognized to thousands of items, which really supercharges the AI camera inside. At CES, I removed this bag of cheese and it read the label and it also recognized it as Kraft shredded cheese. So the recognition is about to level up. What's awesome is that this software is retroactive. So if you already own a family hub fridge with an AI camera inside, you will get this through a software update, which I respect. And this model also was able to close the fridge door on its own. Check it out. Close fridge door. Sick. I really really am looking forward to this. LG also had a new signature fridge with a color touchscreen as well, but it also has that knock knock feature which allows you to see through the fridge which makes it stand out. But check out the way that the doors open, there's a light on the floor and when you step on it, the doors open quickly so this is unique. And when you hit this button on the touchscreen, the freezer door opens too. So this will definitely make us all lazier in 2026. What do you think about it? SwitchBot also had some interesting stuff at their booth as well. They did show off a home robot, which looked really cool, but I do have to admit it was pretty slow, but this is just for exhibition. It took some clothing and moved it into the washer and then closed the door. After all of the robots that I saw at CES, I honestly don't think we're more than five years away from having this a reality in our actual home. They had Ace Mate, which is a tennis robot, and it was really fun watching this. It was way more accurate than I thought it would be. First thing I saw in the booth was this little furry thing and this is supposed to be more of an emotional smart home pet. You can pet it and have it as an everyday companion. And at first I thought this was a prototype, but they said that this will be coming to market this year. So if you're into this, then be excited for it. They had this neat desktop companion as well, which can be integrated into your smart home and that can display different things. So this looks interesting. They showed off their new lock coming with facial recognition like you get on your iPhone, which is really neat. This one has all types of methods to unlock like fingerprint scanning and also just the good old physical key. They had an AI art frame that could be a great accent for your smart home that can rotate the art daily. There was also a cool e-ink weather panel that you can have your full calendar on, give you commute recommendations based off traffic, and you can control your smart home from it with scene buttons. And then check out this little thing, the SwitchBot AI Mind Clip. This can clip onto your shirt, documenting your day, for instance, if you're in multiple business meetings per day. You can have this record and document all those meetings and summarize all the key points. I can see this being awesome for students as well. I know that you can do this on your phone, but having it clipped to your shirt just means you can do it without you even prompting it. So what do you think? Would you use this? Kitchen tech is always mixed with the smart home stuff because I think they're closely related. This year I saw a ton of smart grills. This makes a lot of sense because it takes a lot of the mystery out of cooking and can help you get those perfect temperatures, especially if you're a beginner. So let me know if you're looking forward to digitalizing the grilling process. This AI chef was interesting, not because it had a huge screen in front of it, but because it recognizes what you put into it. Here, this recognized that there were potatoes and it automatically calculated the temperature and duration to make them perfect. So no no more excuses on why you're a bad cook. Same thing here with coffee. Check this out. With E. Cold Brew, you can use one of those 20 Stanleys that you have laying around at home and fill it to this water line. Then you can put the coffee beans into the lid attachment and it has a built-in grinder, which is awesome. That'll help you get a fresh brew every time. You hit the button on the top and just wait. And now you have cold brew ready to go with you in an easy to drink everyday insulated Stanley cup. The mechanics to take water up and brew is kind of genius. So let me know what you think about it. I think it's on Kickstarter now. Here are the components of the entire system if you're interested and the same lid contraption can be combined with this home dock to make cold brew at home too if you're not on the go. This 
might be a game changer. Some random things before I sign off, not sure if this is a first or not, but Mars Tech showed off IPX7 waterproof battery banks. The designs didn't look any different from standard battery banks that are out there, so I really like that. And they had a variety of sizes from 20,000 milliamp hours to 10,000 milliamp hours. So let me know if you would buy one of these or have any use for waterproof battery banks. Aki had some really cool solutions at the convention center. This 200 watt 5-in-1 desktop solution looked really awesome with retractable cables and wireless charging. With this, you can for sure charge all of your daily drivers in one place which I liked and there's also a smaller 100 watt version too if you don't need all of that 200 watt goodness. Now this was probably the neatest wireless charging solution that I've ever seen. You see this puck right here? You can place this anywhere on the three designated spots so you can have up to three at the same time and of course you can wirelessly charge your phone. And that's not what's special, we've all seen that before but guess what? These pucks are also chargers as well so you can take them off and wirelessly charge wherever you want. Isn't that awesome? To be honest, Aki was never really on my radar before, but after seeing this, I'm a fan. I definitely want to buy some of their stuff this year. Rounding it all out, if you're a fan of robot lawnmowers, then there were a ton of them, and almost all of them, they added the most important thing, and that is LiDAR, which is going to make them significantly better. So you should see this spread more across all lineups from all companies soon. Of course, Roborock took their flagship over the top and put a suspension on it that looks like it belongs on a four-wheeler, and they showed it going around a racetrack with simulated hills which it handled with no issues so CES is an absolute wild place for smart home you never know what you're gonna see so that about does it for the best of smart home CES 2026 edition and I did find that it was a little bit harder to find more practical stuff there was a lot of showcase robotics here but I'm still excited about smart home in this 2026 year so let me know what you think and let me know what the best product was that you saw in this video and I can't wait to show you my smart home this year because I'm definitely redoing the whole thing so I'll see you guys at the next CES peace